Good evening, Fire and Glory family. Welcome. Come on, this is a 9 12 55. It's a divine encounter that weekend. Come on, it's been so good. Like through the Thursday, through even like yesterday, all day, the heaven was open. And still here, God is moving so powerfully. So I invite you to just come up to the front. Like an altar. There's a fire in the altar right now. Thank you, Jesus. The heaven is open. So just come and just be ready to just encounter our King. Yeah, we're gonna step into some prayer and just worship. And we wanna give all our hearts tonight. God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we love you so much, Jesus. God, we thank you that you've been just coming and coming with such a glory and wave, God. That, but we are hungry for more tonight, Lord. God, we are ready for more tonight, Lord. That we came together just to worship. We set this time apart just to behold you. Behold your face. We want to see your face tonight, God. We want to engage our eyes. Come plea unto you, Lord. So, Lord, lead our eyes, God. We want to follow your eyes. We want to follow you, God. Lead our eyes. Lead our eyes, size, God. Release your fire. Release your refining fire tonight, Lord. So purify our heart. Purify our eyes, ears. Lord, we, all we want to do is just hear you, just worship you, just give it all to you, God, just to glorify you. Holy Spirit, come. This is your place, God. Come and invade this place, God. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come. We thank you, God. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're releasing. Oh, you're releasing to the tangible, your presence, God, even increasing right now, God. I thank you, Lord, you're making us even more sensitive to your spirit. Oh, uh, God, you called us to just be a partner, just to dance with you, God. You called us to dance with you tonight, Lord. God, we hold your hands. We hold your hand. We are so near to you, God. I thank you, you're calling us to so near to you heart to heart, so face to face, you are calling every, each one of us, even through the lives you are calling us so near to you, God. We say yes. We say yes to your calling. We say yes to your calling. We hold your hands. We dance with you tonight, God. We want to have a close, uh, such an intimate dance with you, Lord. God, we lead our steps tonight, God. Lead our steps. God, lead our steps. We want to just follow your way, God. We surrender all to you God we surrender our heart we surrender our mind we surrender just we surrender all to you Lord God we thank you you call us to be a living sacrifice God we want to lay down our life tonight God we freshly lay down our life tonight God uh, we freshly lay down our life tonight God we thank you Lord that we say yes you're calling that we want to be your living sacrifice burning for you God release your fire 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 Lord so see even more God oh Jesus open up our hearts to give it all to you Lord God we say any hearts just hinders release your fire Lord break every single hindrance God oh just deliver any offenses you deliver anything that blocking Lord just you you are the God who makes a way you are the God who come through Lord you are the God who released the river to the dry land you are the God who released the breast to the dry bones God I thank you you're going to just call your people you're going to bring your sons and daughters you always bring your people oh we thank you God that you're going to release to such a greater glory this season God, we call just names. We call your sons and daughters. We call force your sons and daughters. God, we call force your sons and daughters. God, we call force your sons and daughters. Daughter. Yeah, God, we release the sounds, the callings, the awakening their hearts, God. Just sounds that awaken in their hearts, the calling your sons and daughters, God. Calling the sons and daughters, their hearts will be so awakened in this season. Their eyes will be so open to see Jesus, God. We, we align in their mind, we align in their 
your face walking with you God I thank you Lord you are just pulling your people you are calling your people out to be the set apart Jesus God we say yes you are calling to this generation God you are calling this generation the entire generation God we thank you Lord it's such an honor you are calling you are setting this generation apart for such a glory for the harvest God we say yes for the billions of harvest God we pray for the team the glorious team that you send God to the Malawi God right now I thank you Lord this is your heavens God we open wherever they go God I thank you our angels the harvest angels being sent down with the God they are sent down even before the making a way the preparing the way God, everything is finished in your name God I thank you even though the ground is prepared Lord ground is prepared God we thank you Lord you release the fire fire onto the ground oh Jesus I think it's such a salvation and deliverance happening in the Malawi we call that my life belongs to you God we call that my life belongs to you Lord the all the nation belongs to you God the Malawi will come back to you Lord but Malawi will save in Jesus name God, we call forth the harvester onto this generation. God, we call forth the harvest of this generation. God, we want to go. God, just open our eyes to see the field, the harvest field for each one of us. God, we want to find the favor in your sight, God, to go to the harvest field, God. I think even the this season, the people recognize their harvest field. People will recognize their harvest field. They will find the favor to their harvest fields, God. That's how they're going to recognize their destiny, how God, you are aligning the steps. We thank you, Lord. God, we are so hungry for you, God. We want to run with you. We want to be so united with the Holy Spirit. Everything we do, God. We don't want to do with my own strength or not, nor our own might, God, but by the Holy Spirit, only by the work of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. God, I thank you, God. You're going to open up. Oh, you're going to take us deeper, Lord, tonight. God, release your revelation, the spirit of the revelation, God, the wisdom. God, we ask you, you mark us tonight even more to understand, uh, to understand, uh, to know the mystery. God, we want to know the mystery of the Christ. We want to know the, the, the patterns of the kingdom, the patterns of the heaven, Lord. And we want to know the things your heart God we want to know what the father thinks God oh we want to know your plan God the mysteries of the heaven God release the mysteries of the heaven Lord the patterns of the heaven God the heavenly kingdom Lord God I thank you Lord that you're gonna unfold you're gonna unfold in the spirit God, you're gonna unfold the mystery of the kingdom of Christ tonight, God. God, we thank you, Lord. We wanna break the bread tonight together, Lord. We wanna eat, we wanna sit with you, we wanna be sitting in your table. Oh Lord, we thank you for such a garment, the beautiful garment we release tonight, God. You are calling, purifying the bride unto this generation, God. You are pulling up your bride of this generation, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are washing our garment and you are releasing the white garments tonight, God. God, I thank you for the fire before, God. I thank you for the fire and glory tonight, Lord. The fire that purifies our heart. God, we want to see you, Lord. We want to see you take us up higher, God. We are ready to go deeper. We are ready to go deeper. We are ready to go higher, even beyond our thought, beyond our imagination, God. We are so hungry. Take us up higher. Take us to where you are, where you dwell, Lord. God, this is a season that we can go even the deeper. We are hungry for your heavy 
sufficient God. Oh Lord, we are hungry for your dwelling. God, we are hungry for your dwelling place, God. May our heart be your dwelling place, Lord. May our heart be your dwelling place even more, God. Oh Lord, release your morning fire, God. Release your morning fire. We want to pour for you even more and more in your presence, God. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are stirring up the hunger for you tonight. God, stir up our hunger. Stir us to all more just to cry out for you, to know you, for to have you even more, God. Uh, so that we could give all our life to you, Lord. It's just all about you, Jesus. It's just all about you, Lord. It is you be the center. God, let this worship. You be the center for tonight, God. Oh, we thank you. You're going to open up. Open up the heart. Open up the heart, Lord. Even deep, deep things in the heart, God. God, we say be open in Jesus' name. Let the hearts be completely open in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are delivering the mindset. We thank you, Lord, that we are pulling the mind of the Christ, my God. We receive the mind of the Christ to switch it between you just to have your thoughts, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Fill us up tonight. Fill us up with you, Lord. Fill us up with you, God. Oh, fill us up with you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, all we want is just you, God. All we want is just you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, we are hungry for more of your presence, God. Fill us up with you, Lord. Just let you be overflowing. Let you be overflowing, God. Let you be magnified, God. Oh, Jesus. Let you be glorified, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God, for, for such a joy. You're delighting us, God. Oh, you're delighting us. Lord, open our eyes to hear your sound. Oh, to hear your songs, God. Oh, we say ears be open, eyes to see, ears to hear right now. Jesus, oh, we thank you, God. We have a great expectation. We say yes to everything, that everything that you want to do, have your way, have your way. We give it all to you, God. Oh, Jesus. Let our heart be completely just focused on you right now. Lord, we give our eyes to you, just only you. Jesus, you be the center. Jesus, you be the center of this place. Oh, we thank you, God. Jesus. Oh, we're going to continue on to the worship. Come on, come on up to the front. There's a fire onto the altar. So come and let's just worship and glorify the King Jesus. So come and let's worship together. Come on, just lift up a shout to the Lord tonight. Can we just bless Him tonight? Savior is done. See how his 
said among the nations the Lord has done great things for them and we declare the Lord has done great things for us and our hearts are glad our hearts rejoice come on we believe and you've done great things yeah we believe <laughs> and you've done great things and our eyes have seen that you do great things Yes, our eyes have seen how you do great things. Ah, we're singing hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Come on, people of God, let's lift it up again. We're singing. 
Told you tonight, King Jesus. The Lord has done great things. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Be high and exalted tonight, King Jesus. Great is the Lord. Come on, one more time. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, God. Love it all. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, my hallelujah keeps rising. Just lift your hands and just welcome the increase of his manifest presence tonight. Lord, have your way. We welcome you. Have your way in us. Oh. Spirit of the living God. Yes, we love your presence. Yes, we love your presence. All your nearness is to us goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can 
Tasted and seen I'm the sweetest of lost When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord We welcome you yeah. Holy Spirit
let us become more aware. Oh, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. And let us experience. Without a word, the darkness has to flee. 
At the light of your glory, at the light of your glory, it's who you are, it's who you are. God is alive, and Him there is no darkness. God is alive. Never shifting shadows, God is light. God is light, God is light. It's who you are, God is light. In Him there is no darkness, God is light. Never shifting shadows God is light as we behold the glory of the Lord let the weight of the glory let the weight of the glory fall on us fall
let our worship be a sweet smelling fragrance to your throne tonight, oh God. Yes. Let us pour our perfume on your feet, God. As we pour every care, every burden, all of our thoughts, all of our dreams, God, we lay them at your feet.
at the name, at the name, Jesus. Oh, we see rivers flowing in the name, and we see mercy coming in the name, and we see freedom for the captives now. In the name of Jesus, oh, our eyes get opened in the name, and let the scales fall away in the name, in the name, <laughs> let the case open up upon the only one. Because of that name, because of that name, my chains fell away. Oh, now because of that name, I can see. Because of that name, freedom flows in the name above all. And I just sense as we continue to sing the name that God is setting captives free. I feel like the people walking in the room tonight came in feeling hindered and limited. But I believe that God is here tonight with a breakthrough anointing. He prophesied in Isaiah 54 that God would break the gates of iron and the bronze gates and the chains. He would break them through. And I feel like many of us here tonight have come and it felt like there's hindrances, limitations. We've been stuck in a place, but God wants to set some people free tonight. Amen. And if that's you tonight, are you just saying, you know what? Come on, we go from glory to glory. There's always a breakthrough to another level. There's always another level of glory that God wants to release. I want you to come out of your seats tonight and just come to the front and let's push in a little bit more. You need breakthrough. You need freedom. You want breakthrough to another level of glory. Let's get out of our seats and let's just come to the front. The fire is always on the altar here at Fire and Glory. And as we proclaim the name of Jesus, I believe captives will be set free because everything has to bow at the name of Jesus. 
Come on, lift your hands. Father, we release the power of the name. We release the power of the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow at the name. And we declare strongholds break. Limitations break. Anxiety and fear and depression break. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. You come tonight and you give a garment of praise instead of that spirit of heaviness. We command every spirit of heaviness. You lift off the people of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every oppression bow. We lift up the name. And we release freedom in the atmosphere tonight. Come on, lift his name. Jesus, we sing in Jesus. We proclaim the name of Jesus. Name above, the name above all names. We release the power of the name. We sing Let the 
just open your hands. We receive from the presence of the Lord tonight. We receive and draw from who you are tonight, Lord. We draw from who you are. God, thank you that who you are, you are that you are. I am that I am. He named himself the Lord our peace, the Lord our healer, the Lord our provision. All these names. And guess what? It wasn't for himself. It was for you. Because how many of you know God doesn't need help? He is help. God doesn't need provision. He is provision. Come on. God doesn't need peace. He is peace. And so when he says, I am the Lord, your peace, it's for you, not for him. He is who he is for us, if we can hear it like that. And tonight, Lord, we draw on your identity. We draw on your divine nature. We draw on your peace tonight. We draw on your provision tonight. We draw on your healing nature. The Lord, Shema, the Lord, Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. He's here. He's right here in our midst. God, thanks tonight. And God, thank you that you said through these precious promises, you've made us partakers of the divine nature. God, it's not just who you are, it's who you've made us. We're made in your image. God, thank you tonight. You've put peace as a part of our nature. You've put health as a part of our nature. You've put provision as a part of our nature. Jesus, we are partakers of your divine nature. Just for a few moments, just behold and drink in the wonder and beauty of Jesus because we see him, we see us. As he is, so are we in this world. Not because we tried hard enough, but because he made us this way. We yield to you tonight. Spirit of God, we yield to you. And I ask now, God, that you would release the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, the Father of glory, and that the eyes of our hearts would be flooded with revelation light. Flood our hearts with revelation light to see who we are in you. Mm, yeah. When I see you, I see me. When I look at you, I look at me. We behold you in a mirror. It's the glory of the Lord. I'm looking in a mirror. I thought I was looking at you, but you said I'm looking at me. I thought I was looking at me, but you said I'm looking at you. Cause as he is, so are we. Woo. Come on tonight, God is breaking this, this sense of worthlessness because sometimes man it's you can only receive what you believe that you're worth and i see god breaking a sense of worthlessness right off of us it looks like when someone's about to hand you a, an expensive gift the first thing that comes out of your mouth many times is oh no 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 you don't have to i don't deserve that but you have just defined your limit of receiving because god wants to give some gifts out tonight God wants to release some impartation tonight, but you can only receive what you believe you're worth. And can I tell you tonight, can I remind you of the gospel tonight, that Jesus paid the highest price. You know how much something is worth by about how much someone is willing to pay for it. And heaven was bankrupt so you could get redeemed and get set free and fully sanctified, set free. Come on, grafted into the vine, part of the divine nature. We receive tonight and we break off the sense of worthlessness over an entire generation. I, I feel like I'm not just speaking to a room here. We're speaking to an entire generation who somehow bought into the lie that they're not worth something. God thanks that you break it. God thanks that you broke it at the cross when you proved your love for us and our worth in your eyes. I remember I remember looking through the scriptures one day and I came across this phrase 
it's in the King James Bible, but it's in the footnotes of the New King James Bible because they don't translate it in the newer translations. But every time you see this word, Belial, corruption comes. In the King James Bible, you'll see it. It's all over the Old Testament. It's in the Old Testament 27 times, in the New Testament one time. And I remember looking through this and going like, what is Belial, what is this? Every time you'd see something wicked, corrupt, perverse, you know, oh, I, mean, I could tell you, I could run a list of the, the wickedness that shows up when Belial shows up. But in the footnote, it always says, and these people, the sons of Belial, or a daughter of Belial, or these men of Belial, I kept looking, oh, what is Belial? And I found out that it's not, it, it's, it's not just some thought, it's not just some mindset, it's actually a person, it's actually a spirit. And I looked it up, and there's only one time it appears in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul is contrasting things. He says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? What communion is there, you know, between the temple of idols and the temple of God? He, he contrasts, and then he says, what, what accord is there between Christ and Belial? And I found out that it's actually a person. I looked up what the name Belial means, and guess what it is? It means worthlessness. And every time this spirit of worthlessness shows up in the Old Testament, massive corruption takes place. I'm talking about civil war, I'm talking about murder, violence, all the worst kind of immorality you could think of. Read it in Judges 19 later. I don't even want to talk about it because it's so vile. It's in the word, but it's just like not stuff you want to talk about because it's so wretched. And every time this spirit Belial shows up, wretched, wicked things happen. And this is what the Lord said. He said, whenever you believe you're worthless, you find it easy to do worthless things. And there's an epidemic of worthlessness in our generation. We somehow bought into the lie that we're not worth anything, so we find it easy to just do stupid things with our lives and people throw their lives away on all kinds of lesser gods, if you wanna put it like that, all kinds of lesser pleasures because they didn't find any value in themselves, so they taught everyone else to treat them with less value, and their whole environment now is worthlessness, all because there was a spirit speaking in their ear named Belial, and his whole assignment is to project worthlessness onto people. But I love the gospel of Jesus. Because it said, what, what fellowship does Christ have with Belial? Now, if if Belial is on assignment telling people that they're worthless, you can guess what the gospel of Christ does. And the person of Jesus comes on the scene and says, you have value. You have worth. I gave my life. I shed my blood so you would know how valuable you are. This is the gospel of Jesus that a whole generation that have given themselves to lesser things because of an idea of worthlessness that will be completely flipped, completely turned around because they found out in the eyes of the only one that really matters. Come on, in the, in the opinion of the one that really matters. I'm not talking about Facebook. I'm not talking about any likes on Instagram and how many TikToks and whatever, whatever. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about in the opinion that really matters. They found out that they're really, really valuable. And when the Father looks at them, there's absolutely no disappointment in His eyes. That's worth dying for, and more importantly, that's worth living for. Are you with me tonight? Come on, just lift your hands for a few more, just a few, I mean, this is how we roll in fire and glory, you know? The waves come, and then they keep coming, and then they keep coming. Lord, we receive not worthlessness, not, not the lesser thoughts of ourselves, but we receive Jeremiah 29, 11, for the thoughts, you know the thoughts that you think toward us. You have thoughts, and the thoughts outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. There's so many, it cannot even be counted, and the thoughts that you have towards us are of peace and not of evil. Plans and thoughts to give us a hope and a future. God, I speak to every person in this room and every person that watches on live stream where they thought there wasn't a hope for their future. I'm telling you, I'm, t I'm telling you, the spirit of worthlessness partners with the spirit of suicide, and it's been been messing with the generation 
but God we break its power and we thank you the thoughts of heaven now flood our minds that let the sands the thought that the little the, there's more thoughts on the sand, sand on the seashore God let the whole let the whole beach just be poured out on us tonight let the thoughts of our dad fill the thoughts of our mind God thank you there's never been a moment in all eternity that you haven't thought about us <laughs> oh that's real good and there hasn't been a time in, in, in any moment in all eternity that you haven't thought and you haven't thought the best about us. Tonight, God thinks that every thought you think is the very best. God is light in him, no darkness. God is good in him, no evil. No disappointment in his eyes towards us. God thinks tonight we receive the gaze of the Father, the smile of Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, one smile from Jesus will break the whole thing. I remember I was waiting on the Lord before in the beginning of the year, not this year, but a little while back, and I remember waiting on the Lord, and I saw myself following Jesus in a field. Then he turned around to me. He turned around like this, and he smiled, and his I'm telling you, the biggest smile. Now, for lack of better words, it was like a Joel Osteen smile. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't care if you don't like him or not. It's a good smile. You know, you all know what I'm saying. It'll give hope to anybody. And Jesus smiled at me like that. And this this goes a little deep, but the Hebrew word or the Hebrew letter shin has a pictograph meaning, and it means to crush. Because in the in the the picture of that letter, it's a picture of teeth, and your teeth crush things because you chew your food with it. And so. When God was showing me, he said, hey, listen, son, that's, this is why I'm releasing this smile on you because I'm gonna crush every bit of religion, every sense of worthlessness, every sense of striving, not by your effort, but by just one gaze of my smile. Come on, how many of y'all wanna see the Joel Osteen Jesus smile coming over your face today? Come on, somebody. Come on, if you receive it tonight, give Jesus a really, really big praise. Come on, bless his name. You can be seated, you can go back to your seats. Why don't you give like a COVID free high five to about three people. I'm gonna see you back in just a second here, come on. Woo, come on somebody. A couple COVID free high fives is good. <laughs> Are you blessed? Come on, come on. You know, it's so good, man. I love David said in Psalm 122, he said, man, I rejoice when they said to me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Come on, how many of you excited to be, not just watching online, we love you online, we bless you online, but it's good to be in the house, right next to people in flesh and blood. <laughs> you know, it's like, put your hand on the screen, okay, I, that's good, but I like being around people. And I don't care if your air follicles might get near, near me, you know what I'm talking about? The air follicles when you sing will carry some kind of, no, whatever, man. My air, my air follicles are so anointed, you'll get healed if you get touched by it. Come on, somebody. I might preach so good that spit flies out, man, and you know, you might just get set free. <laughs> Come on, we gotta have a mindset that we're great, we have something greater. Come on, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We gotta have a mindset that wherever we go, it's not that sickness is gonna jump on us, it's that health is about to jump on some things around us. Come on, just tell the person next to you, you're getting healthier by just sitting next to me, come on. Just, <laughs> come on somebody. It's so good to be in the presence of God. Jeremy and Miranda and the team are in Malawi. Come on, they're, they're, they're over there. They're probably on the plane right now. I don't know how long it takes to get there. It takes a long time. Anyone ever been to Africa, you know it takes a long time to get in those planes. And But it's also, I'm sure revival's already breaking out in the airplane. Come on, because that's how it works. I remember we were like on our way back from Pakistan last time. And uh, there was literally, people kept stopping Jeremy and like literally like, like metals dissolving, I think, out of someone's arm or something. And then some knee got healed and all this stuff. And all these people like, man of God, I know who you are. Please pray for me. You know, like the revival was breaking out in the airport on the way home. Come on. Isn't that exciting when, when you're not chasing it down, but it's chasing you down? <laughs> The move of God is chasing us down. Come on. And so I want to encourage you, be praying for them. There's a whole team there in, in Malawi. And what I love about this ministry in particular is, man, the, the love for souls. Like, like, if anything, like my wife and I, 
And I'll share a little bit about this in a second, but man, my wife and I love souls. And so for us to be able to, God divinely connected us to this ministry, it's such a blessing because number one, it's revival. Number two, Jeremy and Miranda have a passion for purity. And I love that. I don't, I mean, I don't want to, I'm like, I want to live a no compromise zone for the rest of my life. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Like, we're not going to be dilly dallying with the line. Like, how much can I get away with? Forget that. How, How much can I give God in every situation and every day of my life? And, and so I love that. But the thing I love about this ministry is the love for souls, man. People getting saved left and right all over the world. And especially right now in the nations. Our goal, our ministry's goal this year is to win a million people to Jesus by the end of 2021. I mean, that's an awesome goal right there. And we're, we're, we're getting there, man. We're, I think we're in a couple hundred thousand so far because of the Crusades. Jeremy's about to go after this trip to Malawi in about three weeks. Going to go to Pakistan again. And, uh, I, you know, I was, I was thinking about this. I don't know. I don't, we didn't talk about it. There was a video, you know, but we won't, we won't play it this time. But, you know, it's one of the things that we do there, not only preach the gospel, we're obviously release miracles, signs, and wonders, is, uh, is, is we also feed the poor. And it's something so, so important because how many of you know that's on Jesus' heart? You do it to the least of these, you do it to me. Uh, that's what Jesus said. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing uh, in Pakistan, and we're, we're going we're gonna to receive an offering in just a few minutes, and, and you, can, you can get ready for that. But, uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing as we're feeding the poor, you know, some, many of you guys have been around the ministry, you've heard this story, but uh, I'll do a, a condensed version. Uh, but back in 2019, when we went to Pakistan for the first time, we went to an Afghanistan refugee camp, which we thought they were like refugees, like you would think the word refugee, but we didn't realize they got kicked out of their country because they were like terrorists. They were like the weapons and drugs people. We're like, oh, great, let's go there. Praise God, you know. And, uh, and, and so it's fine, you know, we went there. Long story short, uh, they, they, we, we fed them a thousand meals, preached the gospel, the deaf ears opened, people accepted Jesus, but some of the, the leaders were not happy. And so they called us Satan and they, they tried to pick up stones. They wanted to kill us with rocks and stone us. So I'm not talking about stoning us like, you know, California stoning. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about with rocks, people getting killed. And they, they didn't tell us this. They said, it's time to get on the bus. And I've been around long enough. I know when they say it's time to get on the bus, you get on the bus. You don't ask questions. You're like, I don't want to pray. I need to pray for three more people. No, get on the bus. You're about a rock is about to fly at your forehead. You know what I'm talking about? And so we get on the, we get on the bus. They said, man, this is historic. This is amazing. We're like, what? And then they tell us the whole thing. Yeah, they wanted to kill <laughs> They wanted to kill all y'all. And I was like, oh my God. So we, we were like excited that we made it out of there. The gospel was preached. People got changed in the whole thing. And, and if that was it, that was awesome. We sowed seeds. But then the pandemic breaks out four months later. And guess what? The, 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 the people there aren't feeding them. And, and they, got, they knew that the Christians fed them. These were, these were Muslim people. People weren't they, they had no food. They were running out of food. And guess who they reached out to when they needed help? They called the Christian people, our contacts over there, and said, can you guys come, please? Instead of, we don't want to throw stones at you, we want to welcome you with open arms because you fed us in our time of need. Come on, somebody. It's not, it's both, it's both and. It's feeding their belly and feeding their spirit with the bread of life. And so we're going to do it again. Uh, Jeremy's going to be there in a few weeks, I believe in May. And, uh, at the end of May, he's going to be going. And so I want to invite you to sow in tonight. We're going to, we're going to give tonight into missions. We, we're raising money because how many of y'all know it costs money to buy food and to send it over there? And, and so we're going, to, we're going to be able to have an opportunity to sow into this, uh, into missions, into what God is doing in the nations. And, and man, I want to also encourage you. We got, we got other trips going on. I'm supposed to do announcements too, so we're going to throw this in here while we're at it. We're going to Madagascar in August, August 17 through 24. We're going to be doing Madagascar Island off the coast of East Africa. How many of you guys have seen the movie Madagascar? Okay, it's kind of like that, but a little more intense. So <laughs> my wife's going to go on that trip, and, and uh, I'm excited. So I want to encourage you, if you have not been on a trip with Elisha Revolution, it's something you want to do. You want to do it. Because how many of you know the, the gospel should be preached locally, but it needs to also be preached globally? It's not either or, it's both and. Come on, somebody, say Amen. amen. We got to preach the gospel. I preach the gospel to my neighbors down the street, and then I go to the nations, to my neighbors on the other side of the planet and preach the gospel because everyone needs it. And so uh, before we give tonight, I was just thinking about this. Um, I was, I've been reading through Hebrews, and, you know, I found this phrase in Hebrews 11 and then also in Romans 4. It said that Abraham, God had, you know, God gave Abraham a promise. He said, listen, your, your descendants are going to be greater than the, the sand and the seashore, the stars and the whole thing. 
But the problem was he was old and he wasn't able to really have kids and his wife was also old and she wasn't able to have kids either. But this is what the phrase that the, the Bible said. It said that Abraham was as good as dead. Isn't that, that's a very interesting phrase. And then in Romans 4, he said, again, Abraham, knowing that his body was as good as dead. And to me, God began to speak to me that in his eyes, we are as good as dead when we are not able to reproduce. Think about this. God, the scripture counted Abraham as good as dead because he wasn't able to reproduce. How many of you know the Great Commission is essentially reproducing ourselves, multiplying ourselves, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations? But God said, he, he said Abraham was as good as dead because he wasn't able to reproduce. And I'm not here to, to, to make a negative proclamation. Let me, let, me, let me flip that around. When we are truly alive is when we have the life-giving ability to, to, to reproduce and multiply ourselves and to give ourselves away and see God do great things. Are you with me? Are you following me on this? Man, I have a passion to make disciples. Like, like for me, as a worship leader, I'm not satisfied to just be the only dude leading worship. I want other people leading worship with me because I know that I, I have to multiply. I have to give away whatever platform, whatever influence God has given me. I have to give it away because God said make disciples. I remember I was a, a youth and young adult pastor at a church, a local church, for, for like 12 years, 10, 10 to 12 years or whatever it was, and, and worship. And then by the time I left, there was nine other worship leaders who could carry the service, and, and there was 10 other young adult leaders and another handful of youth leaders. I did not leave it. They could run the entire ministry without me being there because I valued multiplying myself. The Bible says we're as good as dead if we don't multiply ourselves. Come on, it's getting real quiet in the Presbyterian church tonight. <laughs> I'm hitting you with some good word. I remember we went to the Philippines and caught this anointing. There's a church out there we partnered with, and they multiply like rabbits. I'm telling you, it's crazy. We preached the gospel. We went, did outreach. We, we led a bunch of people to the Lord, and they are like discipleship machines. Their church was a, was a thousand people when we went there. By the time, and about four months later, their church just about doubled, and they retained the entire harvest of all the people that we led to the Lord while we were there on the streets. You want to know why? Because they had a passion for discipleship. They had a passion for multiplication. They had a passion. And I, I, I want to put this and impart this passion to you because, man, it's, it's, the, it's one of the last things Jesus said. Go into all the world and make disciples. He did not say go and make converts. How many of you all know what I'm talking about? He said make disciples. And he says teach them everything I've taught you. Everything I poured into you, you have to give it away. Freely you've received, freely give. And as we give tonight, as we sow tonight, I want you to think with that in mind. Because maybe you're saying, I can't go. I can't go to the nations at this moment. But guess what? You can sow. If you can't go, you can always sow. And I, I made a value. My wife and I, we have a value for missions. We have a value for souls because we know it's one of the only things that will last for eternity. When we sow into other people's salvation, we sow into other people's souls, we know that there's rewards on the other side. And, I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll shorten this testimony because, again, I, I believe many of you have heard it. But just last week, come on, somebody, I just got back from Maui on vacation. Aloha. Mahalo. <laughs> why, why is that so important? Because when we went to Pakistan in 2019, God told my wife and I that I had to sacrifice our 10-year anniversary Hawaiian vacation to go preach the gospel. So we didn't have a 10-year anniversary vacation in Hawaii because I was going to Pakistan where I could have gotten killed for my faith. But Jesus is far worthy, far more worthy than anything. And I, and I told my wife, I said, listen, honey, I feel like God's telling me that I, we got to give our vacation up to use that money and go to, the, go to preach the gospel in Pakistan. And without even questioning, she's like, well, if it's for the gospel, of course. How I many of know that's an awesome wife right there? Yeah, come on now. She wasn't like, well, we need to have our own thing. We need, it's all about us. No, forget that. Her whole life is laid down for Jesus. We, I'm telling you, I'm not just talking talk here. Like, like we lay our lives down for Jesus, not as a, in a braggadocious way, but as a, as, as, a, as a way of this is what we're living for, man. And so fast forward into last year at the end of 2020, the pandemic year, whatever. We, the, the seemingly bad year, whatever. I mean, it depends who's telling the news. And man, our brother-in-law says, hey, you know what? I want to bless you. 
uh, and he didn't, he didn't know anything about Pakistan, but he basically gave us a good chunk of money to get to go where? Guess where? To go on a Hawaiian vacation. <laughs> and so we just got to go. Last week we went, and man, it was so awesome on Maui, sitting there in the blessing of the Lord. Guess what? I didn't just to get, get to go to Pakistan. I got to go to Pakistan and Hawaii because God, come on, brings it all around. What You, you reap what you sow. Am I saying God's going to give you a Hawaiian vacation for the first 10 people who sow $1,000? No, I'm not saying that. This is not an auction tonight. You know, this is not like a sweepstakes. <laughs> sow your money and hopefully you'll win the grand prize. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that when you lay your life down for the gospel, God takes care of everything you need and everything you want. He's good like that. He's El Shaddai. He's more than enough. Amen. So I want to encourage you to sow tonight. When we sow tonight, uh, there, there's some ways that will come up on the screen you can give. Thank you, guys. Many of you have already been giving. You've been part of the, the ministry and, and uh, a part of what God is doing here for almost the whole five years. Many of you guys have been here for the whole five years. It's amazing. So we're, we're, we're always grateful for your generosity. But I want to encourage you, ask the Holy Spirit. If he has uh, put something on your heart, then let's, let's take a moment and uh, let's, let's give to the Lord. We always say it like this. It's intimacy with God and obedience to his voice. Just ask ask God. This is not us trying to pressure you. All I'm saying is that it works and souls are worth giving into. And if you want to sow in the, into that tonight, then we're going to give you an opportunity. There's envelopes behind your chair if you want to give that way. But we're just going to take a, a, a couple minutes and uh, you can go ahead and come on and give while Danny serenades us with the anointed piano playing. Come on. You can come up and give. Jesus. Lord, we, we thank you, God, for the privilege of sowing into souls. God, we thank you as we give tonight. We thank you, God, that our money will help further the gospel of Jesus and the kingdom of God. Father, would you release a breakthrough? God, I thank you that you said when we sow, we reap. And as we sow to the Spirit, we reap eternal life. And God, thank you. We sow into souls tonight. God, thank you for a massive harvest a massive harvest, not only, God, actually, would you just join, would you just, just pray in the spirit with me for a second? We're gonna pray for our, our friends in Malawi, for Jeremy Rand and the team. Father, we just release the blessing and the favor of God over them in, in Malawi right now. God, we thank you not only that you surround them with favor as with a shield, but God, we thank you for the harvest. God, thank you that you release harvest angels. God, I thank you for that the sickle of the Lord to come and, and touch down in Malawi, Africa. And God, we thank you for a massive, massive harvest of souls. And God, we thank you, God, that there would be mass deliverance, there would be mass healing, and that signs and wonders wonders follow the preaching of the gospel and that people God would, would fall madly in love with Jesus because they saw how you loved them first God we thank you for it and we give you glory and as we sow tonight and those who are sowing online we bless those who are giving tonight and we declare harvest back to them as they sow into the things of the kingdom Father thank you that a, a hundred fold return would come and breakthrough would come in their individual lives and their families and families family members that they're believing for. We release it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Come on. Well, we are blessed tonight uh, to, to have John Thomas with us. I remember I was leading worship at, at, at your conference like two years ago, pre-pandemic days. 
And uh, it's kind of like, you guys see the Avengers in the end game, you know, the pre-blip, you know? Anyway, if you, you know what I mean. If you know, you know. But uh, I remember we were there, and man, there's such an anointing. I don't think I told you this, but every night that I was there, I had a prophetic dream. Like every single night that I was there, I fall asleep, but I have these dreams every night. And from there, there was like an infusion of this dream anointing on my life. I love it. God's always speaking to me in dreams, man. It's awesome. But I know I picked up like an increase of an impartation at the conference there. And that's that's one aspect of the anointing that John carries. And 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 you know, he he leads streams ministries and and, he, and the inheritance from John Paul Jackson. And and so you know that he's carrying something amazing tonight. How I many oh, Christ lives in him in a very unique and powerful way. And so would you welcome John Thomas to come up and, and, and minister tonight? Come on. Wow. I love Andrew, love his passion. My wife was texting me, man, he's preaching good. I'm like, I know, I've got to get up after that. <laughs> Yay, Jesus. Come on. How y'all doing? Real great, come on. Good, 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 good. Man, I am, yeah, I'm having fun. This has been a really good time. I'm going to start a little bit differently this morning, or this, this is not the morning, this evening, this day that happens to be now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm living in Texas now. Been there for nine years this week, nice. funny enough. And uh, so I, I've learned some things about Texas. We, we have absolutely everything in Texas. So I, I'm just going to mention some names of towns in Texas just in case you need something. So if you need to be cheered up, you can go to Happy Texas, Pep Texas, Smiley Texas, Paradise Texas, Rainbow Texas, Sweet Home Texas, Comfort Texas, or Friendship Texas. If you're somebody that likes the sun, you can go to Sun City Texas, Sunrise Texas, Sunset Texas, Sundown Texas, or Sunray Texas, Sunnyside Texas, and Sunnyvale Texas. If you're hungry, you can go to Bacon, Texas, Noodle, Texas, Oatmeal, Texas, Turkey, Texas, Trout, Texas, Sugarland, Texas, that's the good one, Salty, Texas, Rice, Texas, and you can top it all off with Sweetwater, Texas. And if you want to go and travel to other places but don't want to leave Texas, you can go to Detroit, Texas, Colorado City, Texas, Denver City, Klondike, Texas, Nevada, Texas, Memphis, Texas, Miami, Texas, Boston, Texas, Santa Fe, Texas, Tennessee Colony, Texas, and Reno, Texas. And San Marcos, Texas. This is true. I need to add that one in there. Thank you. And if you want to do some international travel without leaving Texas, you can go to Athens, Texas, Canadian, Texas, China, Texas, Egypt, Texas, Ireland, Texas, Turkey, Texas, London, Texas, New London, Texas, if you like the more modern version, Paris, Texas, and if you don't want to go to Washington, D.C., you can go to White House, Texas. And if you're not quite sure where you want to go, you can just go to Earth, Texas, or if you just like Texas, you can go to Texas City, Texas. If you get tired, you can go to Energy, Texas. And if you get cold, you can go to Blanket, Texas, or Winters, Texas. We have everything in Texas. And if you have kids, you could just go to Kermit, Texas, Elmo, Texas, Nemo, Texas, Tarzan, Texas, Winnie, Texas, Sylvester, Texas. And if you just like funny names, you could go to Frog Knot, Texas, Bigfoot, Texas, Hog Eye, Texas, Cactus, Texas, No Trees, Texas, Best Texas, Very Best Texas, Kickapoo, Texas, Dime Box, Texas, Old Dime Box, Texas, <laughs> Telephone, Texas, Telegraph, Texas, or Twitty, Texas. And if you just like Texas, you'd go to Cut and Shoot, Texas, Hoop and Holler, Texas. These are all real towns, by the way. I'm not making any of these up. These, you can find all of these on the map. Ding Dong, Texas, <laughs> and Mule Shoe, Texas. We've got a lot of stuff in Texas. So now you know a little bit about the state that I'm living in now but it's not the place that I'm living in. 
and I get to talk about that place tonight. I love it when I get to hear stories of people that have gone to heaven and had encounters and actually seen this one that we worship. It, it, whether it's going to Revelation chapter 4 and 5, whether it's going to Ezekiel chapter 1, Isaiah 6, going to Zechariah and reading about this weird lampstand and the olive trees that are filling the bowl that fills the lampstand. I just, I just love it. Wouldn't it be amazing if somebody went to heaven and was given a blueprint for what heaven is like and got to come back to earth and recreate it? I, that would be astounding, right? Do, do you realize that that happened? Moses led a people called Israel out of Egypt, and he went up onto this mountain in the middle of the wilderness that we call Sinai, and while he is there, this cloud that has lightnings and thunders and flashes coming out of it falls upon the mountain, and the sound of a trumpet gets everybody's attention. They hear a voice, and then Moses is called to go up. Now, the fun thing, Mo Moses, when he first goes up on the mountain, he, he's invited, well, maybe it's the second time, but early before he goes up for the, the long journey, um, he's invited to bring some friends. See, he, he takes Aaron, and he takes Joshua, and he takes 70 of the elders of Israel, and they go up on this mountain, and they sit down on a sapphire pavement, the same sapphire pavement that John saw that Ezekiel saw that is the sapphire sea or the sea of glass that's before the throne. They sit down at a table on the sapphire pavement and they eat a meal with God. And I love the, the phrase in there. It says, and the Lord did not lay hands on the elders of Israel. <laughs> he restrained himself. <laughs> I, I like to think, man, if, if I had an encounter like that, it would be so easy to walk holy, man. I, I would be completely changed. Like, temptation is not going to bother me after an encounter like that. Right. You, you ever think that? Yeah. It's just not true. Because those guys that were up on the mountain that eat a meal with God, God, well, God or the angels or somebody prepared, but they got to eat. This meal, sitting there with God, seeing God before him, in that place, in that presence, they go back down the mountain. Moses goes further up the mountain. And the same ones that were up there three weeks later or so decide that they're going to create a golden calf to represent the gods that brought you out of Egypt. How do you get from here to there? Here's something that we miss. God does not manipulate. He's not going to force you to do anything. You can choose him or not. You can walk with him or not. You, you can choose life or, or not. You, you're given encounters not because he's trying to manipulate you, but to give you an invitation. Right. You, you get to choose whether or not you step into the invitation. Uh, it's, you, you get to choose. He, he's actually allowed you free choice because he wants love, not programming. Something that has been programmed to act as if it was loving but has no choice, has no love. And God's not interested in programming. He's actually interested in love. And so he lets you have choice. When, when he gives you encounters, in that encounter is the potential to be transformed, but it does not guarantee that you will be transformed. You get to choose whether or not you step into that potential, whether or not you begin to steward what he released in that moment. When you, when you got to touch him, when you got touched by him, 
that thing that was deposited in you, you never have to do anything with. But if you choose to begin to do something with that deposit, what he placed inside of you, it has the potential to pull you into your destiny and into the image of God that he placed within you from the very beginning. So they come down and they make an idol and Moses goes up the mountain and he goes further into heaven. And while he's there, he is shown a pattern. And this pattern we, we call the tabernacle of Moses. And, and it says again and again and again in this passage, make sure that you build everything exactly like you saw it on the mountain. It needs to be exactly because you're bringing what was there here. You're taking what was in heaven and you're bringing it to bear on earth. Now, this is what he asked Adam and Eve to do. I want you to, you have this space, this garden where heaven has touched earth and heaven is now transforming the landscape into its full potential. I want you to expand this garden until the whole earth is covered with this reality and there's no separation between heaven and earth on the whole earth, and they weren't able to do that. And so God gives Moses this picture as a promise that heaven was going to invade earth again. And, and in this picture of seeing heaven, there's a bunch of things that we get to find out about who God is, about the ways of God, and how we walk closer to him. That every... every piece of that tabernacle, it, 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 it's not that it has meaning in the sense of, oh, this, this means something, but it doesn't have inherent identity. It's representing something that's eternal in heaven. And when you start going through the different heavenly encounters that are sprinkled throughout Scripture, you will find every piece of furniture in the tabernacle in different people's encounters. Wow. Every single one of them are there. You'll see the lampstand. Zechariah saw it. Wow. You'll see the altar of incense. John the Revelator saw it. You, you'll see, and actually so did Isaiah, You'll see the table of showbread. That's, I believe that one's in um, Revelation as well. You, you, you find every bit, even the ark is in heaven. And it was seen in Revelation. It, 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 it was all, it's not just a symbolism in the way that we think of symbolism. We've been so trained by a Western way of thinking that we don't understand what the church historically called sacrament. Holy things or holy actions that connect to a deeper reality. When we get that these aren't just simply things, then we can begin to look at this and understand what heaven is like instead of trying to figure out why they created this cool-looking building that marched through the wilderness and ended up being replaced by Solomon's temple. Here's a few things that we get to recognize because heaven is the origin of all things and so all things in some way reflect something that's true about heaven. You, you can actually look at the created order and get an understanding of God. Uh, again, the church historically, we talked about the two books of God, the book of creation and the book that was written that we call scripture. And they both reveal God. Creation reveals the nature of God. Scripture reveals the salvation process of God. Now, there's more to it than that, and I'm, I'm simplifying because I want to get to where I'm going. 
but I want to lay a little bit of a foundation. So when you begin to look at the tabernacle, there, there's a, a couple things that you see. One, it, it's called the tabernacle of Moses. The tabernacle of Moses has three rooms. You, you have what's called the outer court. So the tabernacle of Moses was 150 feet deep, so from the east side to the west side, 150 feet, and then from the north to the south, it's 75 feet, exactly two squares next to each other, twice as long as it is wide. And in this, this outer court, and then on the inside, you have the building that's separated into two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place. Uh, the holy place being 30 feet long and 15 feet high, 15 feet wide. The most holy place being 15 feet by 15 feet by 15 feet. Which helps you to understand why the New Jerusalem is exactly square. Because it's the most holy place where we get to dwell forever. So, these three rooms. But it's one building. Does that remind you of anything? Something that's three but one? This is speaking about God's nature. Speaking about he is God. He is God the Son. He is God the Holy Spirit. He is God the Father. The, the outer court is God the Son. There's no way. He is the way to God. This, this, it was a reality when he was saying that. He is the way to the Father. You have to walk through the outer court or else you can never get into the holy place of the most holy place. You, you've got to actually go through it to get there. And, and so we're going to walk through this outer court. We come through the physical, visible body that is on the earthly realm that is no longer in the earthly realm, but maintains its physical form forever, the Son, crucified, enfleshed. We get to the holy place where we begin to understand Holy Spirit. And the deepest place, the most holy place, is the Father himself, from which both the Son and the Spirit proceed from. Though they are one, they proceed from. And to get to, you must go through. Because it's all from him. Through him, to him are all things. But these three rooms, the one that is three, also represents three time periods. And these three time periods give us three different ways that mankind has approached God. The first time period, the outer court, is the time period that started with the fall with Adam and went through Moses. This time period, people worshipped God and approached God through their bodies, their physical obedience. There, there was a, it, almost every, I, I, I can't, I have not been able to find, but Somebody could help me find it if you know of a place. But I, I, I've not found a place before Moses where it said something about an emotional response. It was always an invitation to do something. It was a sacrifice. It was walk before my face, the call to Abraham. I want you to walk before my face. I want you to get up and go out from the land that you're in. I want you to come back to this land. He was talking to Jacob. It, there's, there's promises of what God would do but the response is all about action. Then we get to the time from Moses until Christ, which is where people learn how to worship God with their soul, their mind, their will, and their strength. And in that law, it was said, worship the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. So now we have the body and we get to add to it the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions in our way of approaching God. And that time period was represented by that. But then when Jesus shows up, he says the time is coming and now is when the Father is seeking those who will worship him by spirit and by truth. The most holy place represents those that worship by the spirit. Now, you don't let go of any of the others as you're going forward. 
So to worship in spirit says that you are worshiping with your body and with your soul so that you worship by the spirit. You don't stop worshiping with your emotions because you're worshiping by the spirit. Spiritual does not divorce itself from the soul. The idea that spirituality divorces itself from the soul is a demonic origin, clearly seen in Zen Buddhism, where you have to empty yourself of all desire, of all attachments, of all wanting, of all feeling, so that you can enter into the fullness of spirituality. Kind of like the churches that say, don't get too emotional. Or the churches that say, hey, don't use your brain, just try to follow God. Same thing. We get to worship him with all of our being. Our bodies are involved in our worship. Our mind, our will, and emotions, and our spirits can now engage with him because of the time that was ushered in by the coming of the Messiah that allowed our spirits to come back alive, the very thing that we lost when Adam and Eve fell. Man, I want to follow that bunny, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick on my track. It also represents three kinds of revelation. Three ways of getting light, because there's three different types of light that you'll find. Each room has its own light. The outer court, that's the easiest to see. It's the light of the sun. It's natural light. There is no source of light there. The light that is provided is provided by the sun. That light is the created light that, that's the light that was created on the fourth day when God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. That, that's natural light. That's our ability to recognize God's will and God's direction, God's calling us into something by knowing his ways, by seeing the natural order and understanding what's right and what's wrong, our, our ability to recognize his precepts and begin to follow him according to those things. This is a really good thing. We have to have that. that. That is necessary. We can get light from the natural order, the way things are created and what, what God has brought into place. When you get into the, most, into the holy place, the light that's there, it's no longer the light of the sun. You're not going to see the light of the sun in that place because the, these curtains, I mean, it's covered with cloth and then it's covered with... Uh, goat hair and is covered with uh, leather. It's got all of these coverings that are over top of it. The only light inside of this room comes from this candle that is there that has seven lamps on top of it, the menorah, if you will, that is sitting there. This is the light that was created in the first day when God spoke and said, let there be light before there was sun. The light that was spoken was not the sun, it was not visible light. It was spoken light. This is our ability to be led and recognize the voice of God through prophetic revelation, through the voice of the Spirit, through spoken dreams, visions, the inner voice, the, the different ways that we've learned to hear from God and recognize his voice. This is what we find in the holy place. But in the most holy place, when you get in there, there is no light. Many people believe that the veil, according to rabbinic sources, the Babylonian, uh, Babylonian Talmud and different places, the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place was about four inches thick. In the, in the temple during Jesus' day, it was about six inches thick, but it was also 75 feet high. It was a little bit bigger. This one, 15 foot wide, 15 foot high, four inch thick Fabric. How much light from a candle is going to make it through that veil? And inside, the only thing that you have is an ark. It's no light. How do you see when you get in there? 
The only way that you see is if God chooses to allow the cloud that is fire to descend. The only way you can see anything is by the very presence of God. It's in the most holy place where you're no longer being led by the voice, but you're being led by presence. You feel his presence on something and you move this way. And you feel his presence lift and you stop. Where did I? Oh, there. Okay. And you come back to that place where his presence guides you. This is the most holy place. So it's three lights. It's three types of spirituality. In the outer court, there are two pieces of furniture. You have the, the bronze altar and the bronze lava. The, the place of sacrifice and the place of washing. Salvation because of the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus and baptism and the baptisms, as the writer of Hebrews says, we need to understand baptisms as a foundation. So the water baptism and spirit baptisms that continue, this is that place. Most Christians are more than happy to live in outer court Christianity. They've seen the blood on the altar and they've identified with the blood and some have gotten to the point of being washed in the waters of baptism. And if you haven't, I would highly suggest that because it's not just a symbolism. It, there, there's something that happens in the spirit, especially if you find that you have some generational issues that are still holding you back. There's something that happens in baptism to break that that we have not understood and we need to start stepping into because there's a freedom that we're supposed to have. It was such a freedom that for about four centuries, Christians would take on a new name at their baptism because they were no longer identified by the bloodline that they'd been identified with, but they're now identified with a new bloodline and they had been brought into a new family, the family of God. And so th this, this place where we, we know that we're forgiven and that we have life, I mean, that's amazing. If that's all you've got, that's a lot. That, that's, I mean, you, you can't, there's no way to put a price on that reality. It's, there's, there's no devaluing because this is all the pattern that's in heaven. There's no better than, there's just more than. Is this making sense? Yeah. Let, let us not devalue that and say, oh, well, we need to kind of move on and kind of forget that stuff and just go deeper. No, 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 no. The way in is the way on. Every time you come to approach the presence, you, you get confronted. As soon as you come in, in front of you is this altar. It's seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet deep. It's four and a half feet tall. You cannot escape this thing. There is no way to walk in and go all the way to the holy place without being confronted by the altar. You have got to go around it. And if you decide to do like I did and go off to this side to go around it, you're going to see a wash of blood because it was the south side of the altar. Well, this is the north side. the south side of the altar where they poured the blood. The blood, I guess, would be over here. Get my orientation correctly. The blood would be poured out. And, I mean, can you imagine what it's like to have hundreds of animals' bloods poured out? There is no way to step into the spiritual life, really, without being confronted with the price that it costs. Blood was shed so that we could come near. Because this piece of furniture, it's the one that's the hardest to find when you're looking at the heavenly encounters that people had. But you find it again in Revelation. Because there's so many heavenly encounters. He just, he's seeing layers. 
The, the, the altar, brazen altar, that is the altar of sacrifice, is the lake of fire. That is eternally in heaven where the smoke from it comes up before the throne forever and ever. It's a much different picture of the lake of fire than most of us have been given by our tradition that's not based on scripture. But that's what scripture says. You can read through it. It's in Revelation. It's right in there. <laughs> funny, funny story. I remember when I first, at, well, about four or five years into walking with the Lord, I, I was listening to this supposedly Christian rock and they were talking about how the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever before the throne and I turned it off I'm like I'm not listening to that they don't even know what they're talking about <laughs> I got rid of it <laughs> oh man our religious stupidity it gets us in all kinds of trouble and then next time I was reading through the book of Revelation I read that words right out of the book of Revelation I'm like oh I miss that. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. Right. And yet, God put it in the book of which he said that those who read it and those who hear it being read will be blessed. The only book in all the Bible that that's said of, and it's the book most people are scared to read, I give you a secret when you read the book of Revelation. Do it for the experience, not for your understanding, because you're never going to understand it. We will get to look back one day, and we will understand it, but we're not going to understand it before it happens. This insanity that we think that our brains can comprehend the plan of God is nothing but pride. Come on. Come on. That's another thought. The Lamb of God went to the lake of fire so you don't have to. His blood poured out so that yours won't be. And that is the first thing that you need to understand to be able to go deep in the spirit. It is the most important piece. Without it, you can go no further you can deceive yourself thinking you're having spiritual experiences, but you are not. You're having soulish experiences, not spiritual ones. You cannot go any further without that. The rebirth, where you become a new creation, where the old you is, die, has, is dead and is buried. You've got to figure out the right tense of those words. <laughs> the old you dies and gets buried, and a new you raises to life through the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if you have died with him, then you also will be raised with him. That this reality is, that that's the next piece that we have to come to understand. But we also have to keep on going because you have this rooms, what the Bible calls rooms of mystery. That they're rooms of mystery because they're hidden. When you're looking at the tabernacle from outside, it doesn't look that attractive. I mean, I mean, it's kind of cool. You've got this, it's about seven and a half feet tall curtain that goes around. I mean, it's 150 feet, 150 feet, 75 feet, 75 feet. I mean, that, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. But when you look at the, t the, the rooms, the, the, the building, the structure that's in the middle, if you're at a distance, it just looks like a hill. All you can see is brown that's kind of mounded over because it's completely covered with goat's hair and with leather. And you're in the desert, which means there's dirt on it. It just looks like a hill. It looks plain. It doesn't, what would attract you to that? If you had nothing that told you what was inside, there would be no reason to be attracted, that there was nothing comely about the appearance that would cause us to desire him. And the spiritual life to those that are outside just looks dull and boring, but once you get inside, you start seeing glory. <laughs> Because once you enter in through 
The, the first one is called the curtain. When you enter in through this curtain and you step inside, I mean, the, the first thing that happens, you, you get struck with the fact you can't see anything. Yeah. You ever been outside in the sun and then you step into a dark room? When you first start going deeper in the things of the Spirit, it, it, it's, it's, it's disorienting. I don't get it. I can't see it. It takes some time for your eyes to adjust to the different light because you're used to judging everything by the light that you knew out here, and that light can't tell you what's going on in here. You, you can't figure it out by your perceptions, by what you see and by what you think. You, you're going to have to learn how to only figure it out by the voice once you get in here. This room can only be understood by the voice. Out here, you can figure it out. You can figure out precepts. You can figure out, well, if I do this, then this will happen, and this will happen. And like, there, There's certain things you can figure out, but once you get in, you, you can't figure it out anymore right. unless you hear his voice. And as you step into this room and your eyes begin to adjust, what you see is this swirl that kind of looks like liquid light. It, it's not, but it kind of looks like that because there's a lot of smoke in this room. And both sides of the room have these golden bars that are reflecting the light that's coming off of this candle that's over here. And that light bouncing off of the gold trying to go through the smoke and you just entered in and stirred everything up calls this swirl of golden atmosphere. Remind you of anything? You get your first representation of the glory cloud because it's what you see, but it's not actually the real presence yet. There's, it's there. You're seeing it. You're experiencing it. But it's not yet the pillar that is the light. To your right is this little table. It's about a little over a foot tall, a little over a foot and a half wide, and about three and a half feet long. And on it are two stacks of these round cakes, six of them on each end, and between them is a little golden bowl. And this little table is completely of gold. You, you can't see anything, it's not gold. But we know that it was actually made of wood and then covered with gold. But you can't see that by looking at it. All you see is this gold with gold with gold. And this little bowl in the center has a small coal in it, and its smoke is rising. And the smoke is, is frankincense. There was frankincense that was there. The six pieces of bread on each side, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that are there, are... are, are is called the bread of the presence, or literally the bread of the face. The, the Hebrew word that's used there is, is the face. It's the bread of the face. And this bread is also in heaven. Jesus has a mother come and begin to follow him through the region of Syrah, Phoenicia. My daughter, my daughter, she's tormented. And he just keeps on walking. My daughter, my daughter. Finally, his disciples are like, Jesus, she's interrupting the meeting. We can't hear you talk. Would you do something about this woman? Like, tell her to go away or give her what she wants. Something, but she's bugging us. Man, I love reading how the disciples reacted. It gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> he kept him around. <laughs> I guess I, I get to stick around for a little bit myself. That's a good thing. And as soon as she realizes that they're talking about her, she's like, that's my opportunity. And she runs up close and says, hey, my daughter, she's tormented by demons. And Jesus is like, it's, it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. She's like, yes, sir, but... Even 
the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. The bread that was healing and deliverance is this bread. It's the bread of the face. This is the bread that came down from heaven, John chapter 6, the body of Jesus. It was already food before he came and became sacrifice. It was already provision for healing and for deliverance before he came. Because the writer of Hebrews tells us that the eternal tabernacle of which the earthly tabernacle is a picture of is not created. Now, there's only one other thing that's talked about as not being created in the scripture, God himself. Which is why I say it all is God. It's just representing pieces of him. Because there's only one thing uncreated, which is him. This is just one of our ways of seeing him. But we don't just get to see him. We get to be in him, just like Jesus was in him. He's in us, but we're in him. Isn't this beautiful? Like, I can get lost in this stuff. The table. This is... Healing, this is deliverance, this is the children's bread, this is what's available. Well, once you've gone through the baptisms, the baptism of water, the baptism of the Spirit, you can begin to see by the Spirit, understand by the Spirit, and you can come into the things that are available, the provision of the Spirit for the manifestation of the presence of God. Heaven invading earth. These, these principles were taught in Exodus, and we thought Jesus told us that he did tell us them, but he didn't initiate that in that moment. He was just pointing back to what was already written. You go from the table, which is here, and you look to this side, and there's this lampstand. That in, and you've been to Jerusalem and seen the lampstand that's in Jerusalem? A couple of you. They actually have made a lampstand. I think if people thought about it, that lampstand probably wouldn't last very long. Because the lampstand, because this is a lampstand they plan on using in the temple once they rebuild the temple. It has to be, it's one talent of gold. And we don't know what a talent is. And you'll hear in just a second. One piece, it's not multiple pieces put together, it's one piece beaten out. It's a talent of gold, which is a little over 75 pounds. So think, think about this. Today, if you were going to make a lampstand, it would cost you $7,308,000 for one piece of furniture that was inside a small room that less than a tenth of one of 12 tribes would ever get to enter into. Now, this is not a representation, but this is something that I've realized how our value system doesn't fit God's value system. I mentioned this at the lab on Saturday, but how many of us would be excited to give into a project where pastor or leader says that they need $7.3 million to build something out of gold and he's going to put it in a room that only 100 people will ever get to see. Well, I'm, I mean, can I be one of the 100? No. No. Why would I give to that? Because God told me to build it. Well, who's going to benefit from it? God. So is that, is that going to feed the poor? No, it's going to look pretty for God. You, you see how upside down our value system is? We actually don't understand that as a high value. We, we think that's weird which is a problem. It says something about us, not something about God. 
because he's normal. And when we don't fit with him, we're the weird ones. We do not think like heaven. But we're supposed to because we've been given the mind of Christ. We need to change the way that we think. What's the value? People are going to see it. No. God's going to be pleased. Let's make this very practical. It's the reason why some people hesitate to obey God unless somebody's going to know about it. Because we've taught ourselves to appreciate each other's opinion more than his. If nobody but God is pleased, will you sacrifice all that you have? If nobody ever finds out about it, what if your name doesn't even get written down in heaven? Would you still do it? Well, but what about... Exactly. That's my point. This lampstand, one piece that ends up at the top, seven lamps. It's made kind of like an almond tree. It has like these calyxes, which are basically a, a flower that hasn't opened yet, um, that's set throughout. And it comes up a center stem from a base, and the bottom, it has two stems that come up on either side, goes up a little bit further, two more stems that come up, and then comes up a little bit further, two more stems that come up, and then the center stem. And so you have seven lamps that is going across equally. This is the lampstand that Zechariah saw. It's the lampstand that Jesus was standing in the midst of the lampstand, that he was the lampstand and the lamps of fire that were burning, which were the seven spirits of God. This lampstand is the seven spirits. Now, we're told the seven spirits in Isaiah 11, chapter 2. And it's interesting how it's written out because they're always written out in pairs. Because the first pair is here. Wisdom and understanding. Counsel and might. Knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But the center is the spirit of the Lord. It's the sevenfold spirit, but sevenfold because it's one spirit, but it's seven. Just like the three is one and the one is three, the three is also seven. This is God revealed as the seven spirits, which is why the tabernacle is one tabernacle with three rooms and seven pieces of furniture. And you start finding one, three, and seven throughout Scripture, and you're going to find that this happens a lot. The high priest garments. It's the high priest garments. And you've got the clothing. You've got the ephod. You've got the turban or crown. Three pieces, but if you look closer, there's actually seven pieces that make up the high priest garment. This continues in Scripture. Creation itself, separated into threes. There's three twos, no, excuse me, two threes, and then the seventh, which is the Sabbath. Again, the seven days. So, without going too far, which I might have already, that's probably not the best thing I did. Um... I should drink that since I have it open. One, three, and seven. The lampstand. This is talking about revelation. This is a place where we begin to understand the ways of God through his self-identity. When you begin to study out the seven spirits of God, they're all pieces of revelation that come together to a full understanding of God. And until they all come together, you don't have full revelation, you have partial revelation. None of us gets to see it all come together because we only get to see in part. There will be a day when we will know fully, but until then, we only get to know in part. And so there will come a day when that 
happens, but until then, we each get pieces, but we can begin to put those pieces together to recognize the full counsel of God, which is why we need one another to recognize what God is saying. It's why he has called us to be in community and the necessary piece of community. The next piece of furniture that is in the holy place, this is our relationship with Holy Spirit as we're we're developing it because it's the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that brings healing and deliverance. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. And the third piece of furniture is the altar of incense. Now, this particular piece of furniture, it's a foot and a half wide, a foot and a half, or a foot and a half wide, foot and a half deep, and just over three feet tall. This is where the incense was placed. The coal from the brazen altar would be brought in and put on this regularly whenever it would stop to burn. And the incense would be poured on top of it, or some think that it was put on top of the incense. Either way, it works. It causes, the fire causes the incense to smoke. It it kind of smell nice, but you don't smell it unless you're right on it when you have incense until something burns it. This is the place of prayer. One of the things you know, it's, like I said, the high is two cubits. It's about three feet high, which is exactly the height of the lips of someone on their knees. Not everybody, clearly, but it's the basic idea. This is the place of prayer where we kneel before him. And on this, there are five elements to the incense that represent five different types of prayer. They each have their own property and what they do. This is the life of prayer, but prayer without fire doesn't accomplish much. Which is why James says the effectual fervent, and that word fervent has to do with heat and fire, prayer of a righteous man avails much. Because it requires the fire of God for our intercession to have the effect. But this is the altar that actually is directly below the throne of God in heaven. Ezekiel sees the the four living creatures with the four wheels, and in the center of these four living creatures and the four wheels, Isaiah said that there was an altar that one of them grabbed a, a coal from with his tongs. And as you look at what Isaiah says, above these is the expanse, the sea of crystal. It's a sapphire pavement. Same thing that the 70 elders sat on to eat. It's the same thing that John was in front of seeing when he came before the presence of the throne. And on top of that is the throne with the one that's there, the seven lamps of fire that is in front of that throne. This incense is the place where the souls of the martyrs remain until the full number of the martyrs comes home. They get a place of presence that's reserved. There's only four that are close, as close, but not quite as close as the martyrs. The 24 elders are in the outside circle. They don't even get that close to God, but the martyrs get to stay there until the time for justice when the full number of the martyrs is complete and God pours out justice. But this place of prayer, we begin to fill with the bowls of our prayer. It says in Revelation that the, the incense that was thrown on it is the prayers of the saints. And our prayers go on it And then something is taken from it and thrown to the earth and the effects of our prayers begin to be seen. The angel takes the incense that's now on fire because it's reached the altar and throws it upon the earth and things begin to shift and change in the earth realm. When we begin to step into the reality of what our prayers are doing before heaven, we will see things shift. Because we're, we're not praying. How far do I want to go? 
We are not praying prayers of our own invention if we're praying in the Spirit. If we're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit searches the deep things, even the heart of God, and reveals to us those things. And the Spirit within us groaning, teaching us how to pray because we don't know how to pray, allows us to come into the intercession of Jesus who is forever making intercession before the throne. He never stops with that intercession. It's constantly making intercession for the saints before the throne. When we step into that intercession... Things happen. Things shift. And I think we have for too long thought of intercession in some really weird ways in the church. You know, the classic picture of a few old ladies in a back room somewhere that are halfway depressed and begging God that he might maybe do something is not intercession. Now, that can be intercession, but that's not what intercession is, if you understand what I mean. That fits within the scope if the heart is right. But when you get intercession, you, you, you start beginning to speak the very mind of Christ the will of Christ, the words of Christ into the atmosphere that reaches heaven, and when it reaches heaven, it touches earth. Things begin to shift. It, it, it actually requires a spirit of revelation. You cannot intercede unless the spirit prompts that in you, and you recognize it because of the fervency that comes. There's something that we have not completely lost, but has waned significantly in the last 20 years that I believe God is going to start bringing back to the church. Travailing intercession is coming back. And I don't mean wailing and crying. I mean where we birth things in the spirit. I don't know if you've ever had the unction of God on you where you birth something in the spirit. It is not pretty and it is painful like a real birth. Everything inside of you is aching to see something that you can't even picture yet. You just feel it inside of you coming out. And it doesn't happen with one person alone. There, there, there's, there, there's a, a teaming and a grouping. We, we need midwives that know how to help us birth things in the spirit to come back. We know people that can actually steward those realms of the burden of the Lord like the prophet spoke about and teach us how to step into that burden, under that burden, and allow that burden to come out of us so that things are established back in the earth realm. And I am fully expecting there to come again a time where whole meetings get gripped with travail and begin to birth things in the spirit. It was astounding how often that was happening right before each of the moves of God that we've seen in the last 50 years. I'm not saying it's the thing that the greater revival that we're waiting for, longing for, and stepping into by faith comes but I do believe it will be a sign. And I know it's in the heart of God to release it, but we've got to be willing to be a fool. You don't look spiritual when you're birthing. <laughs> but you change things. Come on. You birth souls into the kingdom. Sometimes it's birthing that, that causes someone that, that could not understand the things of the Lord and didn't want to come, that was resistant to the gospel, that there's something shifts in a night because of intercession. It's birthing that, that changes the hearts of leaders in a moment. That shifts the direction of a nation. We need birthing intercession to come back. 
the altar of incense. In front of us, and we're standing here at the altar of incense, and we stand back up from the place of prayer is this veil. The curtain allowed us into the holy place, but the veil is what holds us before we can get into the most holy place. And it is one piece. To be able to get in, you can't just push it aside. Remember the size of this thing. Four inches thick, 15 feet tall, 15 feet wide. Can you imagine how heavy that is? When I mean, we're talking about hundreds of pounds. I have a friend that was given a vision of a tour of the tabernacle where a guide, always stood right here, he never got to see, was walking him through and explaining all the pieces. When they get to this point, so I'm not saying that this is theology, but the principle is good and it's biblical. Um, when we get to this point, he goes to, to move the curtain aside to go in. And his guide says, don't. You only go in there by invitation. Wait. And so they waited. And after a period of time, the curtain began to lift from the bottom up. And it stopped about right here. And he realized that the only way he was going to be able to go in as if he bowed. If you have not come low into the presence of God, it's not the presence of God you've come into. You do not run up to the ancient of days and give him a high five. You fall on your face like a dead man and you need angelic strength to be able to stand. I've met people that have actually gone there. And every single one of them that have actually gone, they have the same thing. It scared me. Most of them, ah! <laughs> they thought they were dead or they were going to die. Every time. The holiness of God strikes you when you really go there. And humility is what allows us to come in. Why? Because that's what Jesus looks like. For the Son of Man came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. He came low to show us what it's like. If we're going to fulfill the destiny that God has for our lives, it's going to require humility and for us to go low because there are things that we will never step into outside of that. But as you step in and the veil drops behind you, there is no light. For as David said, didn't the Lord say that he would dwell in thick darkness? until the air begins to shimmer and sparkle. And that cloud of fire that you saw over the end of the tabernacle begins to come in through the ceiling and you begin to recognize, you're looking at this box three and a half feet wide, foot and a half deep, foot and a half tall. And on the top of it, a lid that has a picture of two cherubim, kind of having the form of a man, but the face of an ox, and wings that went over. And they are bowing, and as they bow, their wings going over themselves, touching each other, covering two of them, what's called the mercy seat. These are called the covering cherubim. It's interesting that there's two because there used to be three. Somebody else was also called a covering cherubim before he fell. His name was Lucifer. This was his position before he fell. 
He was that close to the throne. Gifting and nearness to God says nothing about whether or not we will fall. Because the one that was the closest fell. Never let us become overconfident in the gifting that we carry, but hold on to the holiness of our God. The most holy place inside of this box called the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of Testimony, is three items the writer of Hebrews says is still in the one that's in heaven. You have the stone tablets that have the ten words. The communication of what it looks like for man to walk in the nature of God, given his ten commandments. You have a jar that was clay but completely covered with gold and filled with manna, the very manna that you could not keep overnight because it would fill with worms, and yet they put it here and they kept it forever as an eternal testimony that God is the provision and that his word is what provides for us, not our own efforts. I keep on seeing the rabbits and I'm letting them run on. And the other thing that's there is Aaron's rod that budded. Remember that story? You have a group of people that decided, we're also the Lord's anointed. We want to, prevent in, to, to present incense before the Lord. You're presenting incense? We can do it. I mean... We're the Lord's people just as much as you are. We're also chosen ones. And Moses' response is, if you want to, <laughs> bring your incense. And they all brought their incense. And the fire that they were looking for came out, but instead of causing them to burn, it caused them to be consumed. Because the same power, the same fire that empowers you is the fire that consumes you when your motives are wrong. Leaders that thought that they were going to rise up into a position, they would be better at leading than Moses. They, they, were, they were able to, I mean, why, why does that person think that he's a leader? He's trying to lord it over us. This, these are exactly their words. Right, what makes him so special? He's trying to tell us what God wants for, for this community. We can be leaders. We're going to do it our way. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll walk into God's promises. We don't have to wait for them. Remember the earth opens up? Why? Well, because rebellion is a principle of hell, so hell opened up to receive them. And then everybody gets angry at Moses and Aaron. They don't have a match in their hand, and they don't have a shovel in their hand, but they killed the Lord's anointed. Who are you? Why, why would you let that happen? And God says, hey, well, let, let's figure out who's going to be leader. Just bring your rods, bring this authority that you're stepping into, representative from each one of you, bring it before the presence of the Lord. We'll lay it before the presence of the Lord, and God will choose who God wants to choose, and let's let God choose. I mean, if God's the leader, let God choose. You know, people don't like God actually being God. They want God to be a genie. Come out when I need him, do what, he want, what I want him to do, and then go away and leave me alone. The problem with a God is he thinks he's God. He tells you what to do instead of you telling him what to do. And he may not agree with your opinions. 
And your job is not to figure out how to change God, but how to change to be like God. They all lay it before the Lord the next day they come back. And Aaron's rod, if you understand a staff, a staff was given by, through the family line. And the staffs at those times, they would actually write the family history on the staff. They would etch it into the staff. So each generation would be writing a little bit of their history onto the staff so that there would be a forever monument of who they were and what they represented. They, they didn't have videos, VCRs. They didn't have DVDs. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have any of the other things that we have to record. This is how they recorded their family history and who they were. And so these staffs were staffs that had most likely been handed down for generations. They, they may have been 50, 100, hundreds of years old. And they get put into the place of presence. And Aaron's rod that has been dead for however long comes out and it's sprouted. It's got leaves, it's got flowers, and it's got fruit. It's got all of it. Every season of life is represented in one place. And God said, now put that forever before me because I'm the one that chooses authority, not people. I put people where they are. I choose authority. I raise up and I bring down. Yep. This is a principle throughout scripture, but it is core. When we get into this place, we're not trying to rule ourselves. We're trying to rep figure out what authority God has called us to and we follow it. We have no question of provision because the promise is right there. But this comes only from presence, not from figuring things out. We have learned in the charismatic church how to live in the holy place. And few are willing to go to the place of self-death to live in the most holy place. You gotta lay down your authority because his is the only one that works there. Amen. You gotta lay down your ability to provide for yourself because he's the only one that provides there. You've gotta lay down your own idea of what you think is right and wrong because his words are eternal, etched in stone forever there. But there is the place of the highest intimacy. That's what we were created for. That new Jerusalem where there is no sun, there is no light for the light of the lamb is the only light that's needed. That will be our home. And we can live there now. Are you willing to let go? Because each step that you take closer, the fire gets hotter, which is beautiful. We, we ask for the fire, right? I mean, the fire glory outpouring. We want the fire. Yeah, that fire that empowers, that fire that brings miracles, that fire that brings breakthrough, that shatters chain, it does it because it judges sin. It judges sin. If there was no sin, there would be no sickness. The corruption that has entered into the world came because of sin, and the fire cleanses it. That there would be no oppression of the enemy if there was no agreement with the enemy. And as he begins to consume... So we, we may be affected by the effects of sin, but sin doesn't have a hold in us. Like just, just because there's sickness doesn't mean that you're, you're held into sin. It, it does not mean that at all. It means there's sin in the world. But the closer you get, the freer you get, and the freer you get from yourself. 
from the world system, the ways of thinking, the ways of doing, and you're left with nothing but him. But isn't that what we've asked for? And he's made a way for us to enter in. His flesh torn. It's a new and living way to come near. No, no longer are those rooms held for just a couple. Those rooms are available to anybody that's willing to walk in. Will you walk in? starts with forgiveness. Have you received Jesus? Have you let his blood wash you, cleanse you? If you haven't yet right now. I mean, maybe you're watching and you, you haven't fully surrendered your life. His life for your life is the greatest exchange you could ever imagine. All that guilt, that shame that has held you down no longer has to have a place. There no longer remains a consciousness of sins for those that have walked into this place. We could actually live as if none of that had ever happened, as if we'd never done it. We can be free completely because the blood is enough. We can come in, the waters of baptism where we wash, but it's the washing, but it's the filling. And here's one invitation that I do believe the Lord is extending tonight is the waters of baptisms. Many of you, maybe you've been washed with the waters and you were baptized, and if you haven't, find the next opportunity that you have. Get community around you because it's a family thing. It's not an individual thing. You, you don't baptize yourself because you're being baptized into family. Get the family of God around you because that's what it's about. Do it as soon as you can. Don't wait. But the other baptism, maybe you've been touched by the presence of God, but you've never actually been filled with the Holy Spirit. Have you received the baptism? Where you've opened yourself up and you've, you've given him permission to take up residence, that, that presence and that power that we come and we get to touch, we, we get splashed in the pool. It's amazing. It's fun. I know this is a serious message, but it's fun. When you get free, It's scary if we're afraid to let go of our sin, but when we're actually looking for freedom, it's, it's the most astounding, greatest adventure that you could ever imagine. It's fun. And you'll know that he's come in because you're not just touched by the power, but you can touch others with the power. Because when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and the power is always for purpose, and the purpose is to be a witness to him, to make disciples of all the nations. That's the reason for the power. And, and if you can't point to a time and say, I, I was filled with the Spirit, I can see a difference. Maybe you don't know the moment. Maybe you don't know the day. But you could, I, I, It used to be like this. I didn't have power. Now I've got power. If you don't have that, you can have it. That, that is available. That is an invitation that's open. It's an invitation that's open for you. Come in and realize that the table that's the children's bread, do you withhold bread from your children? Does any good parent withhold food from their kids? No. It's available. Just like you would expect a parent to provide food for their family, you can expect healing and deliverance when you come into daddy's house. You can expect the light of revelation to, to come, that candle to illuminate truth. Prophetic revelation is not for prophets. It's for children. And it's available to all. And you want the fire of God on your intercession. Here's the next invitation that I know the Lord is releasing tonight. He wants to put fire back on our intercession. Here's something that's interesting. There's only one person in Scripture that is what we would think of as an intercessor. They're called an intercessor, and their main job was to pray. But there's 
a lot of intercession and a lot of intercessors in the Bible. Because in Scripture, intercession is not a separate job. It's how you do every job. David was an intercessor because he was a king. You can't be a king without being an intercessor. Nehemiah was an intercessor because he was a governor. You can't be a governor without being an intercessor. Daniel was an intercessor because he was standing in a place of government and authority. And there's no way to stand in a place. There's no way to accomplish anything of God without intercession. It's the way that we do it. It's not necessarily for most of us, it's not the primary thing that we're called to. There are people that are called to it, yes. And that's a beautiful thing. But it's not set aside for those. It's how anybody that's a believer gets kingdom work done. It does not happen outside of intercession. And God wants to put fire back into our prayers. And begin to allow us to see that fire of heaven coming when our prayers rise up and then they come back down to earth and things happen. Where we've touched the heavens and then heaven touches the earth. And for some, it's time just to let go. You've been trying to provide for yourself. You've been trying to lead yourself. You've been trying to tell yourself what's right or wrong. You've been trying to do this thing with your own understanding. You're trying to figure it out. You're being led by what you think, what you feel, what you want. And God wants to set you free from you. Three things. Baptism of the Spirit, fire on intercession, and being set free from yourself if you want it come up. Those of you that are watching, just begin to position your heart. Those of you that are here, position your heart, position your bodies, just come with expectancy. The holiness of God is beginning to settle in this room. Lord, we thank you for your holiness. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for releasing your holiness. Come, just, just put your attention on him. Don't Start trying to make anything happen. You, you don't have to figure out how to have enough hunger, how to have it, position yourself right. It's not about your activity. The only thing you can do is just surrender because he's going to come. He's already started. Oh, Lord, let, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. More. Let it come. 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 Rest. Come. Come. Let it come. Let it come. More. 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 More, Lord. More, Lord. Father, I'm asking you would release the baptism of the Spirit. Even those that have had it, Lord, I'm, I'm asking for a fresh baptism, but especially for those that have come up looking for power. It's time for the activation of power. Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power. Begin to release the power of the Spirit right now. The power of the Spirit. Come. 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 Increase, Lord. For those 
that have come looking for fire on intercession. Who is it here? Just put your hand up real quick if that's the fire of intercessions. Oh. Father, I'm asking right now you begin to release coals of fire under the intercession of their spirit. The coals that come from the altar on the intercession of their spirit. Release fire on intercession right now in Jesus' name. Release the fire on intercession right now in Jesus' name. Let it come. Let it come. Fire. Coal from the altar. Come. More. More. Increase. Increase. Come. 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 Each one that's watching, just put your hand on your belly right now. Just put your hand there. Each one that's watching, just release that coal right now. The spirit of burning coming on intercession. Fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man, righteous woman. Fervency, effectual prayer released. Father, I'm asking that you would begin to release travail in the spirits of those that you've called to birth the move that's coming. Let the travail come. The groans in the spirit. The birthing of the purposes of God and the destinies of God. Come, come. Come, increase, increase the burden of the Lord, that prophetic burden of the Lord that Isaiah spoke of, that Hosea spoke of, that the prophet spoke of, release the burden of the Lord. Come, 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 the burden of intercession, the burden of the heart of heaven. Break our hearts for the things that break your heart, O oh God. Let us not have cold prayers any longer. Break our hearts, God. Enliven passion. Passion for the lost. Passion for the broken. Passion for the oppressed. Jesus, come. Come. Draw us into your intercession, Jesus. Draw us into your intercession, Jesus. We want to pray your prayers, Jesus. Come. Come. More. More. More in those that have come wanting to be free of themselves. That are looking for a fresh place of surrender where you are the authority that guides them. Where you are the provision that takes care of them. Where you are the decider of right and wrong for every arena of their life. I just release it now. Draw them into the most holy place. Draw them in. I want to warn you, those, that, that, that this is what you've come for. When you first get into this place, it's going to feel dark. It's going to feel like you can't see anything, like you can't figure out anything. But then you'll start to feel the presence and it'll just move you this way or that way. Just surrender to the presence when it comes. But don't be worried that it looks dark at first because it's always going to look dark in this place. But the glory will come. The glory will come. The glory will come. The glory will come. Come, 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 come. Just increase. Holy Spirit, increase. Holy Spirit, increase. Father, I thank you for the ministry of angels being released right now. Father, I thank you for beginning to release right now angelic assignments for purpose right now. Huh. More, 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 more. Let the fire come. Lord, it's you. We've looked for you. We want you. We want you. We want you. We want you. <laughs> ha. More. <laughs> Jesus, come, 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 come. Fill, fill, begin to release power, power. Thank you, Lord. Come, come. Father, each one that's watching, release your presence. Just increase, 
Even right now, just release the cloud of your presence. Just that cloud of your presence, the heaviness, the weightiness of your presence just resting, resting upon each one. Come. Even here in this room, begin to release the cloud. Let, let it thicken. Let it thicken. Even, even what's already released, just let it thicken in this place, Lord. Come. Come. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You know, one of the things that's one of the ingredients of the incense that's in the tabernacle is known to drive away snakes. They can't stand it. The holy place is a no-snake zone. Some of you have been so afraid of the enemy pushing back because you stepped forward. No more. No more. There is a highway of holiness that Isaiah talks about where no young lion comes up upon it where we walk in that path, in that place. And the only warfare that we encounter in that place is the warfare we initiate. <laughs> because if you're advancing the kingdom, you're, you're in war. You're taking territory. But Father, right now, I, I ask that you would just break off the fear of the enemy's attack right now. Those that are here, those that are at home, They've been tormented by fear. They've actually held back from obedience because they were afraid of the pushback of the enemy. I just break the power of that fear right now. No more. No more. Now, Lord, increase your presence. Increase your presence. We want more. More, fire, come, 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 come. Just take us deeper, God. Take us deeper. Come. Come, Lord. Right here, mark this one. Mark this one. Mark this one for his family. Mark this one for the generations that he's been crying out for. Begin to release that intercession that breaks the hold on the generations. Father, freedom right now. Freedom over the generations. Come, 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 come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for visions. Thank you for prophetic revelation being released right now. An increase. What she's seen dimly, let there be clarity in Jesus' name. Come, come, come. More, 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 more. Let it come. Power. Release power and boldness, God. Power and boldness. The words of his lips drip honey. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come. 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 Just rest right here. Just rest. Deeper, Lord. Is that freedom, 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 freedom. Come, come, freedom, freedom. All of it, freedom, 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 freedom. 
Jesus, come. Come. Hmm. Even the mark that the enemy tried to make on her when she was five and six years old. No more. Stop it. Freedom. Freedom. Jesus, come. 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 Power. <laughs> Jesus, come. Come. Just rest. Your presence. Your presence. Come. Come. Just rest. Come. Fill her up. No more striving. Father, I thank you for the light that begins to highlight the path which of the two paths that are in front of her should she take? Let revelation begin to highlight the path, begin to clarify the direction for her to move, and give her the confidence to believe that she hears. In Jesus' name, come, come, come. Let it come, your spirit, just rest, rest. More, 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 fill. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them up. Increase. Increase. Just begin to settle him. Begin to settle him. Even what you started in the last four months in his life, begin to settle him on the journey that you started. Begin to confirm the directions that he's been taking. Let him recognize your hand let him recognize your, your hand of, of, of opportunity and a provision to step forward. Come. Come, fill. Fill her up. Fill her up. It's your presence. It's your presence. Come. Come. Father, I thank you for a cleansing of dreams, a cleansing of dreams. No more torment in the night season. It's done. Begin to release those prophetic dreams. Begin to release those encounters with you in the night season. Begin to give her peace in her sleep and peace in her home. We speak peace into the home. Peace into the home. Just begin to push back. Let the light begin to push back the darkness, the cloud that's filled that home. Let it come. More. More, Lord. Increase. Increase. Jesus. Jesus. Strength. Strength. Where she's already given her yes, the strength to walk it out. <laughs> where she didn't realize what it was going to cost, but she's starting to see it, the strength to continue to move forward because you spoke. Because daddy is proud of his little girl. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Come. It's your presence. It's your presence. Just take it deep. Whew, there it is. <laughs> yeah. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord, your presence. More, Lord, your presence. It's fill. Fill. Father, I ask that you just continue to settle each one, each one here and each one watching 
in the presence of the holiness of the Lord. So there's a place in his presence where there's lightnings and thunders. And there's a place in his presence where the sea is smooth as glass because there's peace. And we can receive from both. Neither one less powerful than the other. And sometimes we get so used to one, we don't value the other nearly as much. And there's a settling that's going on in some of your spirits right now. It's a settling. Things are dropping into place. And it doesn't feel like revelation like you're used to. But you're going to find yourself having clarity in decisions. You're going to find yourself being settled with the steps that you're supposed to take. It's just going to open some things up. It may not be you wake up in the morning and everything is different, but you'll recognize, you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to see it started to make sense then. Or we just release that. We release that settling. We don't have to understand to recognize. We don't have to understand to believe. We walk by faith, not by senses, not by sight. So Lord, deepen faith right now. Deepen faith right now in the name of Jesus. Deepen faith for each one. Hmm. I've seen this a couple times, and I know it's, it's a number, number that are here, but a number that are watching. There's been a question mark over your prophetic gifting. It's like you think that you hear, but you're not quite sure that you heard. And you begin to question whether or not it was really the Lord. In the moment, you thought it was, but then you think about it, and the question comes, and it's actually an assignment. It's an assignment to create doubt, and the Lord is wiping away question marks on prophetic giftings, and he's putting in periods and exclamation points. Some of you, there's going to be an exclamation point. There's a gift of faith that's being released on revelation right now. Some of you, it's just going to be a sentence. It's just a period. I mean, it's just going to be a settle. Like you just, I don't even know why I know. I just know that I know. That was God. We just settle that issue right now. Release the gavel. It is decided. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, God. Come, 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 come. Increase, increase, increase. Freedom. Jesus, Jesus, it's your presence. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. It's your spirit. It's your spirit. It's your spirit. Come, 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 come. Jesus, Jesus, come, come, fill. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit, just washing, just washing. Somebody that's watching at some point during the service or just before the service, I think you already had your, 
the stream on. You were washing dishes. I can see the suds in the sink. And the Lord is, you're one of those that he's putting an exclamation point on that prophetic gifting. You've doubted your prophetic gifting for most of your life. Even as a young child, people began to question the things that you saw and the things that you heard. And you began to question because it didn't make sense and you didn't know what to do with it. But the Lord is settling something in you because it's not just a prophetic gifting, it's a prophetic calling that's on your life. And he's beginning to settle it because he wants to show you more. He wants to show you more. He's shown you some things in some arenas. And as you begin to steward that revelation that he's given you, it's going to increase. And so I'm just speaking over you right now. I release the impartation for prophetic ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I just release it into you now. Now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just wash her. As she was washing those dishes, just begin to wash her. Wash her. Let the tears flow. It's okay. He sees you. You've not been abandoned. <laughs> oh, Jesus, you're so good. Thank you. Thank you for increase. Thank you for increase. Come, 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 fill. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just fill your people. Fill your people. Come, 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 come. Fill them up. Fill. Fill her up. Whoa. Whoa. Intercession. Come. Jesus, Jesus, release it. More, 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 more. Just fill her up. It's for you, but it's not just for you, for others here. The Lord's just releasing. It's like a compass that settles you. You'll always know true north, and the true north is his presence. There's a settling, there's a settling. It's a purifying of conscience. It's a purifying of conscience, a sensitizing of conscience, where there's such a sensitivity to, to not just what, oh, I shouldn't do that. It's the, I should do that. It's the, I should do that. It's that sensitivity of conscience that's gonna lead you into divine appointments where you find yourself moving in a direction, talking to a person, and they're like, how did you know that? How, I, I, this is exactly what I needed. Th those moments where you find yourself accidentally in the middle of a divine assignment. We just release that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, 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 fill. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come. It's the presence. More, 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 more. More, Lord. More, Lord. Jesus, come. Come, come, come. Come, come. More. 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 Here. Here. Revelation. Revelation increasing. Hmm. <laughs> and the anointing to preach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that fire. The boldness, no more fear. 
No more holding back the boldness, what you put inside of her to come out through her mouth and release life. Release life. There's life in you that you can give away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Increase, increase, increase. More. 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 More of your presence. Just fill her up. Jesus, come. Come, come, come. Come. More. More. More, Lord. for the fire. I thank you for the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. Come, 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 come. Freedom. Freedom. Father, just cut off the marionette strings. No more a puppet of others. Strings of control broken right now in Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom. Come. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Let it go deep. Let it go deep. Let it go deep. Come, come, come. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Come. <laughs> come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Just let the sweetness of your presence just wash. Wash, 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 wash. Father, I thank you for opening up her eyes to see. The gift of the seer. To see. Lord, a cleansing where she's the enemy has tried to scare her gift by showing her dark things. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. Jesus, let it come. God. It's your presence in this whole family, your presence, your spirit washing, 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 redeeming the time. You're redeeming the time. You're redeeming the time. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for an increase of activity, and I thank you for a release of mission and a release of purpose upon this family. Lord, I... Oh. Yeah. Lord, whatever you placed on me for revelation, 
and the ability to see and understand in the spirit. I just release and I impart right now to this one. Lord, what he needs for the path in front of him, whatever I have that he can use, I just release it and give it to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that you have called this one to be a leader. You've called this one to be a leader of many, a leader in your body, a leader of those into the purposes of God, to be able to see what's coming and to be able to guide people in the response. I thank you for a gift of wisdom that's coming upon him, even at an early age, that wisdom that comes only from heaven, not just the knowledge of what he's learned, but what's been added by the Spirit of God that comes upon it. And I thank you for settling in him that ability to lead and not being afraid of the gift that you've given him, not being afraid of the influence that you've given him. So I bless him in Jesus' name. I bless him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Lord, I thank you for just releasing more oil over this whole family. Just the oil of your presence. Jesus, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you recognize vows that have been made. And you will not be indebted to anyone. You will fulfill your part. What was delayed was not stopped. And it's beginning to come back. Promises not lost, but it was delayed. But the timing is coming. And Father, I thank you that you always give provision to vision. And I thank you, you've already given vision. I ask you to begin to unravel the fear surrounding it. That your voice would be louder than understanding that's given by the voice of fear but labeled as wisdom. So I bless them with discernment and faith and faith and faith and faith even for the children that still need a home. Jesus. of the Spirit. Just fill her up, fill her up, fill her up. Fill her up. Begin to awaken the giftings that are in her. Whew. Healing. Healing and revelation. Just begin to awaken. Evangelism. Just begin to awaken. Just awaken. Thank you, Lord. More. More. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill them up. Jesus' name.
Daddy. Lord, I'm asking for a fresh filling of the spirit of adoption where this heart cries out, Daddy, and knows the love of a good father. Daddy, Daddy. Father, I thank you for your hand that's on him, even your hand that's on this mind, releasing creativity. Wow, come Lord, come, come. Increase the mark of your presence on him. Father, I'm asking you would just wrap him Wrap him in your love in a way that settles the questions and begins to settle the, even the questions of why. <laughs> even when there is no answer, but the love that heals. The love that heals, the love that heals. Just begin to release that deeper, Lord. Settle it in the spirit. Father, I ask that you would release a hunger for the word of God and a hunger for scripture that would just awaken him, a hunger for a presence that would just awaken him, awaken him even in the night. over your son all the places where he's tried to be strong would you show him your strength would you show him your strength father you put a gift of faith within him I'm asking you to awaken it right now That simple trust in Daddy's hand. Hmm. Yeah. And every voice of accusation would be silenced. Everything that says it was his fault falling to the ground no longer having a place. Father, let your love wash him in a brand new way. Father, I thank you for the brilliance of his mind, the ability to recognize and understand, and I ask that you begin to show him how to use it want to say teaching, but I think you might put it in a box, but it is teaching. It's training, it's equipping, helping others to understand and do. I don't know what that looks like. It may not look like what you think, but he's given you the gift to teach, to mentor. That's a better way of saying it. I just bless that. God. So good. 
Thank you, Jesus. Wow. You know, the Bible said, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, the same God who said, let there be light, also let his light shine in our hearts. Come on, how many of you received the light of revelation tonight? How many of y'all know that he just took all those pages in Exodus and Leviticus that are still stuck together in your Bible and made sense of all of those pages right there tonight? Come on, somebody. We just had a big, big stake, a big, big stake in the meat of the word tonight. How many of y'all are grateful for that? Can you give God praise for the ministry? Thank you, Lord. Wow. So good, so good. And traditional fire and glory way it's hard it's always hard to end meetings I don't we don't know how to really end meetings here they just keep going and going but <laughs> but uh you're free to hang you're free to to soak in God's presence and you know uh a handful of us will be up here uh if you want to receive prayer for healing whatever else you need we bless you guys watching online thank you guys for continually soaking in the glory with us and being a part of what God is doing here in San Diego. I want to encourage you uh, next week to come out. Sammy Robinson is going to be here all four nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I feel like I don't need to tell you who he is because you all know, but just in case you don't, man, this dude is a prophetic machine. Uh, a preacher, I believe for me, every time, it's, he's a preacher of hope, a preacher of faith, and man, prophetic revelation. And man, the words of knowledge have been flowing like crazy uh, in, in this last season of Sammy's life. I mean, probably his whole life. He's, you know, he grew up with prophets, but uh, man, I want to encourage you to be here Thursday all the way through Sunday night. He'll be here. And, and let me just say this bring some people who need ministry, bring some friends. You know, what I was saying earlier, man, it's all, it's all about multiplication. It's all about reproducing the, the image of Christ. And how, one practical way, bring some people into the presence of God and let them encounter what you encountered tonight and what you have encountered in times past. Amen? Amen. So we bless you in the name of Jesus. Continue to soak in all that God has for you. We'll see you next week. Every night starts 645. We have intercession and then seven o'clock worship will begin. And then who knows what happens after that. So we bless you guys. We bless you watching online. Have an excellent week and we'll see you on Thursday. Amen.